Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. In this episode, we're going to try out some rather exciting software, the Sonarworks Reference 4 Studio Edition with Mike. And we are going to ring out the room here with three different sets of speakers. It's quite exciting because I want to see how it fares with the Genelec 1032s, the Focals, and of course the Callies. It's going to be a lot of fun. So before we get stuck into this software, I just want to say thank you Sonarworks because they're giving us three copies to give away. That's three copies of this fantastic software. Well, we're going to find out that it's so fantastic. So thank you. Don't forget to enter to win. Hit that like button, subscribe, click on the link to enter it. Okay, so uh, we've got this rather lovely Sonarworks microphone. And it has an ID on it. Now we've opened up the software. And the software says, measure your speakers. So let's hit the measure the speakers. It says, please prepare your audio setup for the measurement process. Phantom power, 48 volts is switched on and, and is powering the measurement mic. Okay. Yes, it is. Because we're using an Audion ID44. And here is the Phantom. And I also can see signal coming on the Audion ID44. Okay, so let's make sure your microphone input is routed directly into your speaker outputs, which it is. Make sure your microphone input is not routed directly into your speaker outputs. No, it is going into the audience, so I think we're good. Sometimes these rather obvious questions to some of us might not be obvious to everybody, especially if you're sort of relatively new. A single audio interface is used for mic input and output speakers. Yep, that's what we have there. These are powered speakers, so they're going directly in. Audio info sample rate is set exactly to 44.1. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's hit next. It says Sonar Ref, uh, RF reference 20 mission microphone. So now it wants me to put in the code, the actual one that we own. Okay. Next. Okay. Microphone frequency response curve. So it shows me that the mic actually has like a couple of dB lift, about 8K, and probably about 12. Okay. Next. Select your input and output device, Audient ID44, analog one. Output channels, Audient ID44, analog one and two. Nice. Adjust the microphone input gain. First, so you can uh, detect the microphone correctly during measurements. Um, okay. During the measuring process, you'll hear chirpy sounds from your speaker. Don't worry, these sounds are located in your microphone. Okay. Verification complete. Fantastic. So I just adjusted the gain. Determine the distance between the speakers. Next. How to measure the speaker distance. Okay. Don't stand between the speakers. Stand on the outer side of your speakers. Has a little indication here. Position the microphone 0.4 or 0.8 inches away from the center of the mid-range driver. Okay. Start measuring. Gives me five seconds to get over there. Moving to the right-hand speaker. It's very polite, this man. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. Hey! All right, next. Review setup dimensions. If the distance doesn't match the setup, use the controls to make adjustments. It says it's two feet. It's about two feet. From the center of the cone to the center of the cone. Okay, great. Looks good. Locate your listening spot. 
We've measured the distance between your speakers. Now we need to determine where you normally sit while listening to your speakers. Okay. We're doing this all in real time so you have an idea of what it's like. Okay, start and um, stand at the listening position and point the mic at the speaker. Stand, all right. About here. That was quick. Measurements complete. If your distances don't match your setup, yeah, that's about right. Looks good. Next, do you want to set up and measure your listening area? This is based on measurements you carried out earlier. How to position the microphone. Keep the position with blah, blah, blah. Move to the next location. Pay attention to the signals. Move to the next location. Stop. Stay in your position. Okay. So that means move to the next location. So from one speaker to another or whatever. And this sound means stay in position. Okay, I get that. Okay. Move the mic to the indicated area. Okay. 37 points left. Wow, this is thorough. Oh, wow. This is crazy. This is pretty idiot proof when you've got an idiot like me. This thing's thorough. Wow. That took a little bit of time. Okay, show results. Oh, measurement complete. Measuring complete. So, ah, interesting. So, it says results. Oh, I see, so the left one is down there, the right one's over there. So the right one's generally louder, must be positioning in the room. It's got a huge lift. Wow, at about, what is that, 120, 110, which is pretty typical when you've got a big console, but that is, that is particularly massive. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bump at 60, It's kind of nice. Uh, well, not a little bit, like four or five dB. So, and then a bit of mid-range honk, uh, which is probably to be pretty typical of NS10s, not this, but not nowhere near as crazy as uh, NS10s. Um, and then everything, you know, is relatively, relatively flat-ish in, uh, in the pure mids to the high end. Now, of course, that's not entirely true. There's a bit of a bump here, more on the right-hand speaker. It must be getting a reflection off of something. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's that bit of metal there or this screen. So the right-hand speaker looks like it's just a little bit brighter. So that's the whole point of doing this, to measure how the speakers are in the room. Quite exciting. We've got to name, I should say, the profile. So we'll call it Cali LP6 and finish. Launch reference system-wide. Your speaker profile has been saved. So we're going to do the Genelex and the Focals next, and then we're going to come back and give it a listen. Okay, so here's the Genelex. Now, the Cali's on the right here are $300 speakers. The Genelex, which I have been using since blah, 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 1990, blah, 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 um, are about $5,000 a pair. So there's a little bit of a price differential. Now, in the mid range here, especially the high mids and the high end, it's pretty darn flat. Now, don't get me wrong, there's little bumps, but you know, it's relatively flat. 
Um, again, the right hand speaker seems to be a little louder and brighter. And that has probably got a lot to do with like just being a little bit uneven on here. So that's going to be interesting that, you know, that the Sonoworks has got here and flattened this stuff out. There's a dip out like 600, 700 kind of area. Pretty wide. There is a bump up at about four. And then there's the typical sort of 120 to about 200 area where it's bumped up which I believe is also sort of is very similar to the Callies. However, on the General X, it's not as pronounced. So a lot of that kind of thickness and low end that the Callies have got, you're able to see that looking at here. They definitely have a lot of oomph behind them. And being on a console, you're always going to get that little, you know, low bump coming off of the console. If you remember when I interviewed Mark Endert, he said that when he finally got rid of his SSL, he actually built a fake SSL, like a fake surface because he was so used to listening to music that had that reflected sound that he couldn't mix with just a pair of speakers on a stand and a, and a screen in front of him. So he had to recreate that. So we get used to these things. So on the whole, I mean, the main major dip is in that six or 700 area, uh, which is also prevalent to a certain extent on the Callies. This is quite exciting. So let's call this Genelec 1032. And let's save this. So we have the Focals done as well. So here's the Focals. They've got quite a dip in the mids, in the high mids. That's an interesting way of looking at it though, you know, because, you know, obviously I could, if I, if I could move it up or down. Um, but I suppose that's how it's reading it. So it's reading it as a bit of a dub, a dip there, which is nice because, you know, to be honest, they're not overly bright. They're very different sounding to the Gen X, but that's sort of why I like them. I mean, I like the idea of having speakers that are different in response, different in size, different drivers, et cetera, that I can check my mixes on. Because the, the more things I can check them on, the happier I am. Um, the Focals, I find, uh, probably because the high mid's not being so aggressive, are nice to work on for long periods of time. And that little sort of like 12K and above area up here, the fact that this is boosted a little bit is kind of sweet as well, you know? Little boom and fizz, as they say. Wow, look at that. There's the correction. And that's what it's hoping to get there. There you go. So not a lot going on in that high mids there. That whole sort of 1K, eh, about 1.5 1 or 2 and above. It's not doing a lot. That's, that's good to know because in that area, that's really where I trust them is in that area. So it's not doing a huge amount there because they're not, nothing's flat, but they're flatter in those high mids. What it is doing is filling in some six to 700, um, a little 350, which is interesting because I usually cut that quite a lot. It's a bit of a dip. And then of course, taking out that bump, you know, at about 150, like 120 to 150 to 200, that kind of bump there. And then the low end, you know, increasing a little bit, just about 80. So. Quite interesting. I'm going to listen. I hope you're enjoying this so far. So don't forget that you can enter to win this. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, but enter to win one of three copies of Sonoworks. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. I haven't done this yet, so it's going to be very interesting. Got the Genel X up. The reason why I wanted to start with the Genel X is, frankly, I've spent my whole life, well, not my whole life, I've spent over 20 years working on Genel X. I think I posted a photograph from like 95, 96, I can't remember, in England, and there was a pair of Genelecs on there. Probably the first ones that ever came out. I don't know, don't know when they came out. Anyway, I've got Spotify open. I know people are telling me to use Tidal, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I get it, I understand. But I'm going to go and I'm gonna play Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. This is one of my favorite ever productions and mixing, ever. There's a couple of things I go to. I use Sledgehammer. I also use um, Bob Clear Mountain's mix of Woman in Chains. There's just certain things that are just fantastic mixes. I always listen to Bohemian Rhapsody, but that's just because I'll always listen to Bohemian Rhapsody. And that's a masterpiece as well. But Sledgehammer, the low end is super, super tight. It's perfect. And if the system isn't great on the low end, you notice it. So I'm starting, I'm about 35, 36 seconds in. That groove. What's interesting about that groove is Tony Levin, and he took the tips of drumsticks and put them 
on his fingers. And so when he's playing, he's like slapping the strings. I told my friend uh, Eliza about that, and she's a, a classically trained violin player. And she looked at me like I was an idiot. She's like, Classical musicians have been doing that for years. I was like, okay. So apparently it's not new. Okay, so this is the no curve. This is me listening. You just have to trust me. <laughs> Sounds like the Gentle X to me. Sounds fantastic. Looking at this curve here, we know that the high, high mids are going to stay pretty consistent. But we're expecting to see some mid-range, a little bit of ducking, and a little bit of boost either side of 1K. So let's see what happens. As suspected, the high mids, subtle changes, and we're talking like you know, half a dBs, little tiny cuts and stuff like that. The high mids are staying pretty darn consistent. Um, the mid range, either side of 1K, is almost like a tilt, isn't it? It's like a 700, you know, 6, 700 dip and a 1.5 boost. It's like really kind of strange. Um, that mid range is really kind of forward. I like when I put this on how it sounds. The biggest, 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 biggest difference that I'm noti noticing is the low end. So what's happening is when Tony Levin goes to a certain like doom, 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 boom, boom, doom, there's certain low notes which sort of jump out of the speakers because they're obviously hitting some kind of resonance, whatever the right, correct word is. And it doesn't sound even. Where I know that Tony Levin and this mix is super even. So that's a huge, huge difference. Now, again, it's like four or five dB maximum at one place, but it's very interesting. Going in and out. Seems a little bit more stodgy on the low end. Put this in. It just sounds like a better mix now. <laughs> and it was already an amazing mix. It's got a lot more clarity. I'm gonna do the same song, so I have perspective. And we're gonna listen to, we'll go to the Focals next. We'll save the little baby Callies to the end. So loading up the Focals. Now the Focals, if you remember, mid-range, high mids were quite a lot softer. They weren't particularly uneven, although there was a little bit like of a 12K bump, but you know, relatively, um, relatively flat-ish. Nothing is ever flat speaker-wise, but, um, but the same issue, maybe extending a little bit more on the low mids, but. Uh, so there's more of a cut in the low mids than there was on the Gentle X and more of a boost in the high mids. Let's have a listen. I mean, even with that boost in the high mids, they still are what I like about them. So that's very, very interesting. What do I mean about that? Um, the thing about the Gentle X is, is uh, they're very even on the high mids. Um, you know, there's a little boost and cut. These are generally down according to this, and they sound smoother and less harsh, and they're, you know, the Focals are great for tracking on for long periods of time. Even with that boost, which sounds fantastic, they still sound really nice to my ears. They still sound sweet. They don't sound offensive and harsh, which is, comes from a guy that grew up using NS10s, you know, when I first started. <laughs> Super, super even on the low mids now. Really, really good. Taking it off. I think what's interesting about these speakers is they don't, they, regardless of the solar works being on or off, they're very, very pleasing in, in the mids. They, they, they are more enduring to work on. Um, and I think that's probably why you know, so many people I know that have Focals love them. Because we came from a world when I was a kid, everybody had a pair of NS10s, which I believe has 7 dB lift at 1.5K. And that's like, rips your ears off. I mean, it's not a nice frequency to have super loud. I get the boost in the low end on speakers. Makes sense to me. You know, the fact that we have a console here that's giving us increasing it artificially. But 7 dB at 1.5K is like, Somebody putting an ice pick in the center of your head. And these are definitely um, a lot smoother and a lot more fun to listen to.
So with or without the um, EQ, I love them. The, the EQ is definitely bringing up a little bit more of the high mids. Here's the Callies. So they've got a huge boost. Um, it looks like, whoo, eight, nine, about just over nine dB. Might be approaching 10 um, at about 120. Um, they've got not quite as an extended boost, but definitely pretty heavy up to about 250. And there's a cut. And then there's another cut again in like that 600 area. There's a boost around about 1K and another dip. The, the highs are fairly, fairly flat, but they've got a bit of a, a high boost boost, you know, at about 12. Now, I like the sound of these little speakers. And the artificial low end that they create is, is actually quite fun to reference on. Because a lot of speakers, you know, on the cheaper price end, um, don't reproduce any low end, number one. And number two is like people want extended low end. You know, when they're sitting in their cars, they're cranking low end. It's something that we all naturally reach for. So a little baby speaker which has a bump on the low end is not a bad thing for me because I feel like it's reproducing, you know, what music should sound like. However, you know, a lot of that's got to do with the fact that they are sitting on the console here. I love my Gen X, I know them well. The Focals, blown away by just how amazing they are for the price. Everybody I know thinks that. We went down, we took a masterclass down to Vintage King and we went through, how many speakers was it? I don't know, 20 pairs of speakers. And blind test, we liked the Focal shapes the best in their price range. And um, one of the guys in our masterclass bought a pair, purely and simply based on that. So we do love them. The Callies, though, they're $300, and I love the way they sound. And I love being able to support something that's affordable. So I'm excited, very excited to hear what uh, Sonoworks does with them. Have that amazing low end for a tiny little speaker. Yeah, you know, as I say, the high mids are pretty flat. Let's engage. With the boost and the high mids there, it's giving it width because, you know, high mids give us distance. Wow. I mean, <laughs> the extra detail on the high mids, some of that low mid cut, game changer. I mean, it's a game changer. I mean, this is like a whole new world now where we can take all different levels of monitors at different price ranges and do really dramatic stuff. Wow. I've decided I want to go back to the Focal because they were like, I really liked the high mids on that and I loved how it sounded. So I'm going to go back to the Focal and I'm going to choose a song I recorded, which is called You Found Me and I, by The Fray. So I'm going to have a listen to that. I know this very, very well and I'm going to listen to it with the EQ on at first. Does that same thing, vocals out front, sitting there, beautiful. Really nice. Okay, taking the EQ off. It's a crazy world I live in. The uh, behind us is uh, Dan Rothschild, who's Paul Rothschild's son. He's the bass. He's a bass player and a very, very good friend of mine. And he's actually the bass player on this song. We flew him in to record. Okay, so we all come full circle and was to become neighbors. Anyway, this is uh, absolutely beautiful. This is a wonderful piece of software. Um, we've already used it, as you know, mixing with headphones. Um, we've been doing the live streams mixing in the box, so please check out all those live streams. And that's using Sonarworks and using the Blue Lola headphones. And the reason why I chose the Blue Lolas is because they're relatively affordable and I wanted to mix on something that some of you may have. Now don't get me wrong, I have my Focals, which we absolutely love. We have our Biodynamics that we absolutely love. We, we have other headphones which are a lot you know, more detailed and, and great sounding headphones. But I went for the Lolas with the Sonarworks and it was really, really very revealing in the low end in particular. I think one of the biggest problems that I see, you know, in mixes when I get 
uh, mixed critiques to do and stuff is always in the low end. And people's low end varies dramatically from room to room, from headphone to headphone. Because we enjoy that bump down there. We enjoy the little fizzy, you know, sizzle over the top. So we like this kind of scoopy sound. The problem is, is it's not very conducive for mixing, for accuracy. You're going to get a full sense of security. So this software, you know, it did something on the Focals and the high mids there, but it, the Focals still have a really, really beautiful sound in the high mids, so it didn't make it brash. With or without it, the high mids were not an issue. But on every single set of speakers, whether it be the Genelex, the Calais, or the Focals, what it did very effectively was make up for the fact that there's a little bit of a low bump. On some speakers, it's like 3 to 4 dB, and on the Callies, it was significantly bigger. And that low bump is because I've got it sitting on top of the console. And that's very typical of any studio you go to. And when I go to all of my favorite studios, like Sunset Sound, NRG, East West, United, if I'm in any of those rooms, they're all going to have that. Not everybody has this kind of software. So I'm wondering whether they will get it. Who knows? Because it's the characteristics of the console and the room that are affecting your speakers as well. I think that's very, very important. This is telling us lots of great things. It's telling us that, you know, <laughs> number one, that you can take the Callies and improve the sound dramatically and only spend $300. You can t then you can take great speakers like the Focals and the Genelix and even out their issues. However, those issues are inherent in the room and just being amplified by the room. Um, this is a great software. My hat's off to you, Sonarworks. This is going to make a huge difference um, for many, many people. And I think between this and understanding acoustic treatment, this is a huge deal. So thank you for letting us try this. It's, we're going to use it. We're going to use it. And as you know, we're increasingly mixing in the box. So this will go on our output stage. So as ever, you can win one of three copies of this. It's very generous of Sonarworks to do that, so I really, really appreciate it. I love it when companies allow us to give back to our community. It's a huge deal, and so thank you for doing that. This is a great product. Whether you've got $300 or $5,000 speakers, this can be a massive benefit to you in your room. So thank you, Sonarworks, for doing that. Um, so as ever, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave some, you know what, leave some comments and questions below. And if you've used this software, let us know. Let us know what your experiences are. All I've heard so far inside of the Academy and those people that have bought this and have been using it is that it is fantastic. I've only heard good, positive things. So please feel free to give us your experiences. Don't forget to enter to win it. Please subscribe. Please go to producelikeapro.com. Sign up for the email list. Um, it's growing super fast, the Academy. So thank you ever so much. Don't forget to enter to win. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing.